The pros are reaching shore in just under 50 minutes. Behind them, the frantic chaos of what this swim is. But there are always two ways to look at things. Above and below. American Andy Potts is the first to emerge from the Pacific. Not surprising, he was an all-American swimmer at Michigan. Next, a huge pack of contenders. It's filled with former champions. And those who have the credentials to win this race. Next, to the bike rack, where there's a virtual who's who of Ironman greats. In the red, Chris McCormack, number four. Arriving next, in the blue helmet, Germany's Andreas Raylert, who finished third last year. Then, number one, two-time defending champion Craig Alexander. It means all the contenders will start the 112-mile bike ride together. There is urgent calm in their preparation. Ahead, by two minutes and 45 seconds, is Andy Potts but he knows what's building behind him. A monster that wants to destroy what he's built. Five minutes later, the women hit the steps. Number 130, Britain's Julie Dibbins is second out of the water, right where she expected to be. The swim and the bike are definitely my strength and the run is my weakness, so I definitely will be looking to, to be up near the front uh, with a lead of some of the, you know, the super fast runners like Marinda and Katrina Morrison, um, if, if, you know, if I'm going to have a, a chance of, you know, placing higher up. Marinda is Australia's Marinda Carfrey, a fabulous runner and a good enough swimmer to be in the mix. It's her second time in Kona. Well, last year, I think I dropped the ball a little bit in my swim training. I was so worried with making the distance um, and getting through it that I let the swim fall off. She not only made the distance, she finished second to Chrissy Wellington. Now she's two minutes behind Dibbins and the leaders. A school below and one above. The one below is more organized, but they're all getting where they need to be. These are the people that are the soul of the race, the majority, the age groupers, the ones who bring their dream to Hawaii for all of us to see. Those who don't race for a living, they race for their life. This is one of the most important things they will ever do. This will prove something about them, prove something about Kyle Garland. Last year, he didn't finish the swim portion in time. That was nothing compared to what he's been through. First, it was cancer. A stubborn cancer that wouldn't die. The chemotherapy seemed like it would never stop. The process damaged his heart, and he needed a new one of those. And got through that. Hey, what's happening? Where are you right now? Uh, I'm just driving up past Malibu up to Zuma Beach. Hey, cool. When you get down to the beach, go out about 50 meters, swim down about 400 meters, parallel to the coast, 
do that about four times. Uh, yeah. I should do it for today. All right, great. Thanks. Talk to you later. Have a great swim. We'll see you when you get back. I started going up the steps, and the uh, timing judge kind of st stepped in front of me and said, uh, you're done. And my first thought was, yeah, I'm done. Get out of my way. i got to get on my bike. And then he said, no, you didn't make it. And for the first time, I looked down at my watch and saw that it said 920. And obviously, I knew exactly what that meant. I just kind of collapsed there on the steps. Not once did the possibility of not making the swim enter into my brain. That was the, the least likely scenario for me was to not make it on the swim. I think that to be able to cross that finish line, I will put the exclamation point on my survival. Four years ago, Kyle couldn't walk up steps like these without getting winded. Now, with his new heart, he triumphantly does, having beaten the swim cutoff. It seems everyone knows his story. Or do the volunteers just treat everyone with special care? It's on to the bike, then hopefully a marathon. The recognition in the shower is a reminder, one step at a time. Sharon Colgan is where Kyle was a year ago. And the worst job in Kona belongs to the man who tells her her race is over. She goes down just like Kyle. There are no words. The 56-year-old physician trained like everyone else. She can't have her dream this time, and everyone can relate to that. I'm proud of you right this minute. I got your back.